Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lexi, and today I'm going to be telling you how you can exchange your temporary resident visa for a temporary resident card. Now, this is going to be the easy way, not the, I'm not gonna say hard way, but more difficult way. So, stay tuned. Okay, so before we get started, if you guys could just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and like the video, and hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. So that being said, like the title says, this is going to be simplified residency. So how to obtain the Mexico temporary residency card with E. So this is the easy way guys, not the hard way. So you're not gonna be doing it yourself. It's not a do it yourself guide here. It is a, the easiest, most stress-free way to do it. So let's get started. Let's get this party started right. Okay, so here we go. So the temporary resident card is for folks who are looking to reside in Mexico for more than 180 days and less than four years. Okay, so you must travel to Mexico within six months of receiving the visa. So remember that because if you let that, if you let it slide, then you're going to have to go through the whole um, process again with getting your temporary residency visa and you don't want to do that. Okay, so what you're going to do here to make the process as easy as possible is hire a facilitator, okay? So you're going to hire a facilitator and then you're going to make an appointment with them for when you arrive to Mexico, okay? So, and like I was saying, this is not a do-it-yourself guide. This is a higher facilitator, so you can make your life easy guide, right? So, uh, but I'm not going to cover that. It's, it's basically the same, mostly the same steps, but uh, the facilitator will be doing everything for you. You know, all you'll be doing is, you know, showing up and uh, for the most part. Okay, so after you hire your facilitator and you make the appointment, uh, you'll ideally still be in the United States. But, um, you know, you, after that's done, you're going to go ahead and book your flight to Mexico because, um, you know, because at this point, you know, you've been approved for your residency visa and all that good stuff, right? Okay, so uh, the exchange must occur within 30 days of arrival in Mexico. So again, if you miss that, then you will end up starting all over again. Okay, so there's a fee <laughs> for the temporary residence permit or residence car, and it's about 350 US dollars. So be prepared to pay that. So it's not cheap, you know, getting residency uh, it's even more if you're getting permanent residency, but this is the fee for getting the temporary residence card. Okay, so you're going to need to show that you have a local address in Mexico. So Airbnb is okay. I use the Airbnb, so there won't be any issues there. Okay, you'll need a utility bill with your Mexico address on it. And it doesn't have to be in your name. So what I did and what most people do is they get the landlord to loan them the utility bill. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, I booked my Airbnb and well, I, actually I didn't book it yet. I contacted the owner uh, for the Airbnb listing that I was interested in and asked her before I booked it if I'd be able to get a copy or you know, get a copy of the utility bill, and she said, sure, you know, no problem. And so then I booked with her. So a lot of them are, you know, used to uh, immigrants coming in from the United States and, and other places abroad and needing this particular documentation. So it won't be any issues getting that from them. Well, it shouldn't be, <clears throat> but like I said, just don't, don't book until you 
confirm that you can get the utility bill. Now, if you, uh, because you are using a facilitator, they might be able to get an address for you uh, because my facilitator kind of mentioned that, you know, if I didn't have it yet, that they could get me an address. But um, just to make things easier, you know, if you can get, have all that stuff uh, all set up, then, you know, they can just go ahead and, you know, gather all the stuff together and, uh, you know, do the submission uh, with the INM office, which is the immigration office in Mexico. Okay, so and then of course you need to bring your temporary resident visa with you and you'll have that because you'll have your passport with you. Okay, so once you arrive in Mexico, you are going to present your residency visa to immigration. Okay, right? And then after you get settled into your place, you're going to meet with your facilitator, right? Hand over all the documents which is the uh, passport, you know, residency visa, utility bill, and fees, okay? So the facilitator will collect their fee, uh, download your digital FMM form, which is actually something that's created uh, as you enter uh, the airport uh, in Mexico. They will schedule your appointment with INM and escort you to INM on your appointment day. Okay, so on your appointment day, you will arrive ahead of your appointment time. So, I mean, these, this is a really slow process, but you still need to be there on time. If you missed your appointment, then, you know, you just don't know when you're going to be able to get another one. So you don't want to do that, you know, because you remember you only have 30 days to get all of this done once you enter into Mexico with your temporary residency visa, okay? So you're gonna pay your fee for the residency card uh, at INM. So you'll be paying with a credit card. Uh, you're gonna get your photo taken and you will be fingerprinted, all right? If you have long hair, pull it back, you know, off your face into a ponytail or braid. And I didn't have, I had my hair pulled back, but I didn't have it in a ponytail and they did give me a little ponytail holder thingy so so they're real serious about that and I, I didn't think it was possible but my uh, my temporary residency card photo was 10 times uglier than my temporary residency visa photo so you know and I think they I think they did they do it on purpose those um uh, those those uh um Feminine, female agents over there. I, I think they're, you know, I think they're haters. So, um, so just, you know, be prepared for that. Be prepared for the hater, the hater rate, and you know, your photo may not be so cute. So, all right. So once you do all that, um, you're gonna relax in the waiting area because it, it takes a while. There's a lot of people, you know, there as well. Uh, trying you know for whatever purposes and so it takes a long time and uh, the INM office tends to be a little inefficient so just be prepared um, wait for your name to be called and then you receive your temporary residence permit or temporary residency card Okay, so, and your temporary residency card is initially issued just, or valid for one year, okay? And then you can renew it up to, you know, three more years, or, or in total, yeah, yeah, actually up to four years, because it's, no, you can renew it, it's, it's issued for one year, and then you can renew it for three more years, for a total of four years. So, and then after that, then you can apply for your permanent residency card. So that is pretty much the process for that. And see how easy it is. And, and you will, so um, as far as fees for the facilitator, uh, it can vary. But um, I know I was going to be in Mexico for a while. Some people 
uh, they want to pop in real quick for a week or two and then you know go back to their home country but um, you don't know when you're going to get that appointment so if you can stay longer then go ahead and stay longer but um, uh, I find you know it's going to be cheaper if you say oh well you know I'm going to be here a while so I'll take the lower price because there were two fees uh, for mine I could either pay like a little over two hundred dollars well, well, I'll just say 4,000 pesos. It was 4,000 pesos that I paid. And you can also uh, get like a, what they, it's supposed to be like a more quick turnaround. And uh, it came out to about $700. So I was like, well, there's no way I'm paying $700. And I didn't really need to because I wasn't in any kind of rush. So, um, so I just paid the 4,000 pesos or like a little over like $200 and you know, I got everything. I got my, uh, temporary residency card and, uh, it was the, the process was really quick because I had an appointment on a Thursday with the facilitator and they had gotten me an appointment with INM for the following Friday. So it was a really quick process and uh, and I paid the lower fee. So, you know, if you can stay, uh, you know, I don't know, because you never, you still never know, but um, I have a sneaky suspicion, like whether you're paying the low end or the high end, it's gonna go pretty quickly, but you know, you don't wanna take that risk if you really aren't going to be staying more than uh, a couple of weeks. And I say, if you can stay a month, stay a month, just to make sure, you know, you're not rushing around because even with that, you can kind of, whatever city you choose to uh, enter into Mexico through, you know, you can kind of look around and, you know, maybe do some scouting to see maybe where you want to live and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, if you're planning on, you know, just coming in and going right back out. So... So that's that's pretty much the process is is super easy uh, a lot of people don't want to pay for the facilitator and if that's you that's fine because you can do it yourself but you'll need to really uh, have a handle on the language you know Spanish I don't I wouldn't say you have to be super fluent but you at least have to be fluent enough to communicate with the people down at INM. Not all of them speak English or they speak very little English. And, um, you know, so it could be more difficult for you to get things done. Some people, when they're uh, filling out the application, the FMN, well, not really so much, well, not the application, um, but, you know, well, yes, when they're downloading the application and I don't know, they just get things wrong. You know, I, di I didn't do it. So I've only heard of people making mistakes. And if you get there and something's not right on the application or something like that, then uh, unfortunately you're gonna have to, you're gonna have some problems. I don't know if you're gonna have to start completely over or what type of delay that's gonna cause for you. So, you know, just don't do it. And, um, and I, I personally think it's worth the money. You know, I like I said, it was 4,000 pesos. It didn't break the bank and it shouldn't break the bank to you. If you can afford to move to Mexico, then you can afford to pay, you know, $200, $225, it was something like that, $225 bucks for a facilitator to just do all that stuff for you because once uh, we got to INM, because I met them at their office and then we got to INM and it was right across the street too, so that was really convenient. So we just had to walk across the street to INM and this is the one, I went to the one in Playa del Carmen and uh, so they're not it's not a real it's not efficiently run so I was there for about maybe five hours something like that four or five hours total you know and that's what that was me getting to the uh, facilitators office like about 30 minutes early so it was a long long process and it's hot they will the waiting area in Playa del Carmen is outside, so you will be baking and boiling for those hours. You don't want to leave the area because if they call your name and you're not there, yeah. 
you're not going to be happy because they're going to move on to the next and then you're going to show up later not being able to speak Spanish and <laughs> all that good stuff. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's basically it. Okay. So good to know. All right. And then I've already talked about it taking several hours and that type of thing. And you usually get your temporary residency card the exact same day, you know, unless they run out of cards. And that's happened. It didn't happen for me, thank goodness, but it, it can happen. And so you'll just have to, you know, come back whenever they get the cards in. So, and, you know, these steps are general in nature, you know, what you will experience. And, but it will, it will vary. It will vary from consulate to consulate and from INM office to INM office. And, um, but uh, Playa del Carmen, but it was an easy process, you know, in Playa del Carmen, despite it just being really slow, a really slow process. So, and, uh, you know, you're gonna be out there baking and boiling. And, you know, by the time you get in there to take your picture, you're not gonna be looking so hot. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even see me I mean my picture is so dark I don't know I, I think she like I said they I think they are hating down there at the office and uh, you know they are uh, just they're like your picture is not gonna be attractive I think I think they do it on purpose and if you find it you know they they've done it to you I mean I think I need you guys to go ahead and put your comments down there in the comment section and let me know if they are also, all right, that's the cat. I don't know if you heard them, but that's the cat acting up. But um, yeah, so let me know in the comments if they messed up your picture and got you looking all jacked up. Cause they got me all jacked up. But anyway, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, share it with your friends like the video and i will see you in the next one